Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Yes, I am a KDE developer and I want to talk to you about the things that I do for KDE. So in today's episode, we're going to talk about bug fixes, we're going to talk about switches and we're going to talk about the floating panel. But let's actually start off with the switches. So these are the KDE's Plasma switches and you might say, well, Okay, they look fine, but I've never seen them in KD Plasma, and you'd be right, we actually use them extremely sparingly, but we do want to change that. So you might ask, but aren't those the same thing as checkboxes? I mean, they do the same thing, you just turn them on and off, and yes, in theory they do the same exact thing. However, they do have a different reflection on the user about what they do. So what we decided to do is to use switches every time you have to do a change that applies instantly, and to use checkboxes every time you have something that doesn't apply instantly. To make a practical example, if you're doing settings for an application, you should use checkboxes because usually settings don't apply immediately unless they do in which case you should use switches but for things like you know the Wi-Fi applet or the Bluetooth applet when you turn on and off Bluetooth or Wi-Fi it does apply instantly so that should be a checkbox so we thought okay let's start using switches in this consistent manner as an example in the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth dialog but there is an issue a pretty big one actually the switches looked horrible like just bad really bad so we had to fix that and that was actually fixed by another contributor who made a merge request to fix you know the look and it made them look much better it was a very nice merge request so what am i doing here exactly you may think and when we're talking about k it's never that simple in fact we have two different styles we have more than that but i'm going to simplify a lot the manner so Basically, we have a style for applications and one different style for the desktop. So this other contributor did implement the new look for the applications. However, they didn't do that for the desktop, which is where I come in. I'm, I know how to do desktop stuff. And so I implemented the one for the desktop, which, by the way, has to follow the Plasma theme. So this is the main difference. Whenever you have to do something for the applications, you do that with QML or Qt widgets. Whereas every time you have to do something for the desktop, you have to follow the Plasma theme, which is an SVG, which means you have to do a QML file that reads from an SVG and you have to make sure that the SVG is customizable from third party themes which is painful. It was rather painful. However, this is my merge request. I did a merge request to implement the new look for the switches using SVGs from the Plasma theme. And for this, I actually created a new SVG, which is called switch.svg. And as an attempt to make sure that people can understand how this works and can make their own themes for customizing the switches and also maybe you know start contributing to KD Plasma, I'm going to explain very briefly how the SVG works. So firstly you are greeted by a giant blue element and that blue element is an hint on how big the switch should be. If you make it taller it's going to be taller, wider it's going to be wider, that kind of stuff. Then you have four circles on the bottom and the first one is called handle and you might guess it it's the handle of the switch and then there is handle hover which is drawn instead of the handle whenever you actually hover the handle and then there is handle press which again you guessed it is when you press the handle is enough and then there is the shadow which is always drawn on the bottom of the handle you do also get another weird circle which is the handle focused which is right now just a ring and this is drawn I don't remember if on top or on the bottom of the handle and it's drawn whenever it's on uh, focus which means you like press tab until you focus that element then on the top you get a couple of elements that actually you know tell you how it works how it looks uh, for the background you do get active and inactive and you get for each one of these left, center and right elements. Now the left and right ones are placed obviously on the left and on the right without any modification, whereas the center element is actually stretched to make sure that it fills the whole width. This should be easy enough. There's also a red element, which is called that. And um, you might ask, should I also keep it in my own theme? The answer is yes. You might also ask why, and to that, I will not answer, I don't remember. 
there are some things that work and you never quite question them. Just, just do that. I swear that it made sense when I initially thought of it. So just copy paste it. Fine, fine. Okay, now before getting to the floating panel, a couple of bug fixes that I've done. The first one comes from a bug report. And by the way, thanks to everybody who is actually doing bug reports because, you know, it's the only way that I'm able to know that there are bugs in KD Plasma software, which is useful to know, to, the say, to say the least. This person said, if you have multiple panels on the same side, then there is some weird extra space between the desktop and the panels. That is, the icons cannot get too close to the panel or even the widgets on the desktop can get too close, these kind of things. And it's actually weird. And it's especially weird if you consider that when I saw the bug, I tried to reproduce it and I could immediately, like it was so easy to reproduce, which is usually not the case for bugs. So I tried to fix it. My first guess was struts, struts, or however they're pronounced. So you might not know what they are, I didn't either, but basically whenever you have something on the border, you that something can ask to have some reserved space on that border uh, to make sure that no other window you know, goes underneath or on top of it. As an example, whenever you maximize a window, you don't want that window to go underneath the panel. So the panel has to actually ask, please, window manager, give me some space that is reserved just for me. And that is called a strut. So I thought maybe we're setting struts incorrectly. And for this reason, we're taking too much space. And But that didn't make any sense, actually. Because whenever you maximize windows, they would maximize correctly. And the only weird thing is that, you know, the desktop was weird, not, not the applications. So there is something else, but I had no clue whatsoever what that something else would be. So I kind of gave up because, you know, I can't fix everything on myself. And I thought maybe in the future I will be able to fix this. However, there's an issue, which is a lot of people started opening this same exact bug report. So I was closing them as duplicates, but it was evident that something had changed and people were now encountering this bug a lot. So I had to fix it quick because people were annoyed about it, which is fair, but I didn't know how to fix it. So I had this crazy idea, which was just dumb, but somehow it worked. That is, I took the entire code base of Plasma and I searched for every single file that had the word thickness inside of it because I thought, okay, somebody is doing something wrong with the thickness of the panel. So let's just check every single time the word thickness is used in the entire KD Plasma code base. The, the things I do for you, you don't understand me. It worked. Actually, it was pretty easy. I found one file that used the word thickness inside of another function, which was called available screen space. And I thought, bingo, because maybe we are calculating the available screen space incorrectly and available screen space sounds like something that could be causing this bug. I have no idea what that is, but some sounds correct. And it was. We were doing some math issues with that. Basically, what we were doing was summing up the thicknesses of each panel on the border side, which doesn't make any sense. It's almost like, I don't know if they're one on top of each other, but they aren't. So I don't see why we would do that. I just changed the code so that it took the max value and it worked. It fixed the bug. So the bug was there. However, here's the weird thing. The bug was there since 2014, apparently. Nobody had touched the code since 2014. This makes me wonder, why are people just starting to realize now? Like, there were lots of bug reports from just the last couple of months. And the theory of another developer, Nate, is that maybe people are switching from Latidoc to Plasma panels and Latidoc is meant to be customizable. So they're customizing a lot of Plasma panels and only now realizing about this bug. But I'm not sure if I'm convinced by that. It's It just sounds like such an easy bug to notice if you ever use multiple panels on one side. And I did that. How did I not notice ever? But I mean, it's fixed. So everything went smoothly, I guess. Then I noticed a bug. So this time, no bug report, I noticed something, which is pretty big news. So basically I went to a center, centered uh, panel, which is not full width, and I just moved it around. And here's the weird thing. 
Whenever you moved it to one direction, the panel would move in the opposite direction. So you move it right, it goes left. Move it left, goes right, which is wrong. <laughs> and I thought, who is the person that managed to just mess it? It was me. Obviously, it was me. I just realized that I had just done a merge request about how the panel is positioned on the screen. And obviously, I messed something up. So I went back, I checked my merge request, I checked the code. And yes, you guessed it, I literally changed a minus sign to a plus sign. So whenever you know you had to add the distance that the panel was supposed to have compared to the center, the offset it's called, it just added the minus of that, so it went to the opposite direction. Th that was literally it. So I did a merge request, which literally just changed pluses to minuses, and uh, the merge request description was like, whoops, sorry. <laughs> Then I got a nitpick in a bug report that was actually a feature request, which by the way is fine. You can use bug report to make feature requests. However, whenever I get one, my reaction is just like, oh, more work. <laughs> but just kidding, I, I did seriously consider it and the nitpick is, so you know that whenever you open kickoff, you have an highlight to show that you're opening kickoff. Well, in the breeze theme, it's just a line. However, other themes can customize that look. And as an example, you can make that line an entire rectangle. And here's the thing, that rectangle is drawn on top of kickoff, which would hide its icon. So the request was pretty simple. Can you please make it so that the highlight is drawn on bottom of the kickoff icon instead of on the top? Fair enough. <laughs> How would you even test this bug? So you just change the theme and you make the highlight a solid rectangle, otherwise you don't even notice it. And then you just change the Z coordinate of that item. Because if you use like CSS, you might be used to it. Some elements do have a Z coordinate too, which is like how close they are to the screen. And things with a higher Z coordinates are drawn on top. So I just gave a very low Z coordinate to the highlight and that was just enough. So these are three fixes and the switch. Now we're getting to the floating panels. But before that, let me say that if you want to continue me doing this kind of development, I'm not hired by KDE, I'm hired by you, subscribers and viewers of this channel. And my goal is to be able to raise 700 euros every month to, you know, sustain my expenses. Otherwise I would be doing like KD development completely on my free time and unluckily I would have to get a real job as people say. So if you're able to chip something in that would be awesome. I've got Patreon, I've got Ko-Fi, I've got Paypal, I've got LibrePay, YouTube memberships, whatever. Whatever is awesome. So a uh, floating panel, I have to address some criticism yet again. So I've been asked to add an option to defloat the panel. Sorry, that was it. I've been asked to add an option not to defloat the panel whenever a window is maximized. And the funny thing is that the person asking for the, the people asking for this are like, it's just an option, so it shouldn't change that much. But I've also been asked, <laughs> I've also been asked to add an option to change how much the panel is floating. And I've also been asked about another option and each of the people asking for each of these options are like, it's just one option. I don't see why you're making a big deal out of this. And here's the thing, it's always just one option until you realize that if you start implementing all of the, it's just an option, they become a lot of options. And currently the panel inside of its settings has like one, two, three, four, five, maybe six, no less than that. So even adding three, that would be adding like 50% of the panel options just for the floating panels. And all like each of these option is something that I have to maintain and make sure it works and make sure that it works in combination of any other possible configuration. And uh, no. <laughs> we uh, I have to draw the line somewhere and uh, this is where I draw the line. By the way, you can customize how much the panel is floating by changing the plasma theme. There's a nice guide on r uh, slash KD. You, you can do that. Just there's not a UI for that because if I started adding UIs for all the feature requests that I got, we wouldn't stop. 
Also, I want to say that adding an option not to deploy the panel wouldn't really solve anything because it would be an off by default option that maybe wouldn't be that discoverable. And the idea is that you should get a good experience out of the box. So if the defloating is bad, then that should be fixed and you shouldn't ditch the entire thing as an off by default options. In general, you, you should avoid off by default options as much as possible, uh, unless, you know, they're very important. However, I did manage to make some significant improvements to the panel this round. Firstly, I started working on shadows and the floating panel currently has no shadows and there's a reason for that. So in order to be floating and still retain uh, usability, so whenever you click near the panel, you want that click to be redirected inside the panel because otherwise you just lose it and it would be less accessible. I actually make the window of the panel bigger than the panel, panel itself. And then I just draw transparency around the edges and I just draw the central thing. This is how you do floating panels correctly. This is how Latidoc, to the best of my knowledge, does that. This is the way to do it. However, if I now try to do shadows, the shadows are going always to be drawn outside the window by the window manager, which means that if I try to do that, the shadows will be outside of the transparent rectangle that I drawn, which is wrong. So I just couldn't draw shadows. And my mind actually stopped there. But I just realized that I can actually do that still. So basically, whenever you have a normal panel, you use that option to draw the shadows by the window manager at the border of the window normally. But whenever you had a floating panel, then in that case, I can actually draw the shadows myself inside of the window. Usually the window manager does that, but I can do it myself. This is actually the idea behind CSD and SSDs. Usually CSDs draw the shadow themselves, whereas SSDs ask the window manager to do that. Kiniplasma is SSDs, but in this specific case, I can do an exception and make sure that the panel draws its own shadow. And it kind of worked. There is still an issue that is for obvious reasons. I don't make the window like take all the space around the panel but I just take it from the left, right and bottom, but not from the top because on the top, I don't need any extra space. It's not floating on that side, which means that if I try to draw the shadow myself, since I can only draw inside of the panel window, obviously, I am only able to draw on the left, right and bottom of the panel and the shadow doesn't appear on the top. So to avoid that, I need to do the same thing that CSDs are doing. That is, I need to take also, the top of the panel has some extra space, making the panel window even larger and then draw the shadow normally. I can do that. However, I can only do that if I also implement this second, second thing that I'm going to talk about, which is better the floating. So there is an issue in taking more space than you actually need to. That is, whenever you maximize a window, the maximized window is going to treat the entire panel as if it was um, space reserved for the panel because you know it's a strut. I have talked to you about struts in this very video. You have reserved that space and you're going to get that space. If you want the panel to defloat without adding an without adding any extra thickness, then you would have to say whenever you defloat, you have to change the reserved space from full thickness to less than full thickness so that the maximized windows actually takes that space. And here's the thing, you cannot do that. You cannot change the amount of space that you reserve on each screen border. You just can't, believe me. I mean, you can, but it looks horrible. So, so you cannot do it. And um, I gave up until I had this realization, which is I can actually lie. I can go ahead and tell, okay, I do need the strut, but the strut does not need to be as big as the panel. So usually the strut is as big as the panels because you're, you are reserving that amount of space, but I, I can actually lie and pretend that my panel is smaller than it actually is. And always, always without ever changing, reserve less space than I'd need to so that whenever a window is maximized, 
I can actually defloat into the actual size that I told the struts to have. Does this work? On X11 it worked perfectly out of the box, on Wayland it didn't. Why? Because on X11 it's the panel who sets the struts, whereas on Wayland it's not. Actually the panel asks Kwin to set the struts on behalf, on behalf of it. So it sounds like it should be pretty simple for the panel to ask Kwin, please Kwin, don't reserve me that much space, reserve me a bit less. It's not. So I even got like notes on the, how messy this is. So basically, this is how it works. The panel needs to ask an interface which is called the plasma shell surface, telling them how much space to reserve. At this point, this value needs to be taken and read by the plasma shell interface surface, uh, even though this class has a friend class which is the plasma shell interface which does most of the work and I have no idea whatsoever how the plasma shell interface surface should read values from the, from the plasma shell surface like I just don't understand it looking at the code and then the values in the plasma shell interface surface go into M plasma shell surface inside of XDG shell window which is in Kwin and from that I can set the correct struts. So there's a bunch of things that have to happen and a bunch, of, a bunch of things that I have to change to actually lie about my struts. It's very easy in X11, it's hell in Wayland. So that's what I'm currently doing. So as you can see, I'm working on a lot of stuff and the reason, there is, and there's even more stuff which is cooler but I can't talk about yet. So more is coming up. So again, if you're able to donate something that would be awesome, I'm just doing this in my free time currently, so I'm trying to structure it more as a job, and I'm also doing all of these videos, not just about KDE development, but also things in general, explaining, explaining Linux. So if you want to support both the channel and my KDE um, involvement, then please consider making a donation if you can, if you cannot, no issue whatsoever, that happens. Anyway, I will do a new video tomorrow and um, thanks for following along.